woman who had the job encouraged me. She went off to have a baby and had determined that she, she um, you know, needed to give up that role and so encouraged me to apply and I got elected. At and, 21. Yeah, at 21. And anyway, and I went, oh, okay. And so that was um, part of it. And of course, that's when we started to really push. Make changes yeah, in there. To, and push the government, push outside the police and with women in the community in New South Wales that women police needed to have greater numbers. Yeah. We needed to be allowed to work in operational policing. And in 1976, I and two of my colleagues were the first women in New South Wales to work in operational policing out on the street. And... and uh, and it was a trial, and the senior women were just mortified wow. that this was going to happen. They, really? Yeah. You know, it took me a long time. I used to call them the dragons. Yeah. Um, took me a long time to forgive them. But yeah. they... Because uh, uh, that's the thing, isn't it, too? You know, you, I go, oh, my... Because I still get frustrated where we're at in yeah. terms of yeah. equality with Good. women and positions. And, <laughs> yeah. And when I hear you talk, though, I go, God, we, we've... We've come so far. We've got so far to go, but we have come so far. But often, unfortunately, it is women who hold back other women as well. Well, and that's really, really sad. And I, you know, spend time, you know, with a lot of women now, but just to say that I think it's incumbent on all of us to actually... um, you know, support each other. Yeah, and to, God, yeah. You, you don't you don't always have to like the the person, the woman, but you do actually at least have to give them a fair run. Yeah, and and support them and advocate, and yeah. that's you know clearly what I've done all along. But um, I think I, I, you would have heard it. But Madeleine Albright has that lovely line that that she was the Secretary of State in the US right. and said, "There's a special place in hell for women who don't support each other." Ah, and I think yeah, that's, that's a very line. good. That's a it is, line. Yeah. and I think that's true. And yeah. so. Um, so we advocated, and then of course the senior women said, "Look, it'll be a disaster," you know. Mm. And I went, "Oh my God, what if you know?" It was the first time really I had to confront the idea. What if they're right? What yeah. If I, what if I can't do this? You know, what will happen? Yeah. Uh, and eventually, you know, I kind of was given some advice, like, you know, get serious, you'll be okay. Yeah. And you're no dumber than the men," said a very yeah. wise <laughs> detective sergeant to me. Right. Well, thanks for that. Yeah. And, um, You'll uh, be fine anyway. They sent us to a very difficult place, but I also learned that if you sometimes jump in the deep end and you and you learn to swim, then yeah, you know you can you can kind of get through the barriers much quicker. Yeah. So we did. So they took us sent us to a place called Darlinghurst in Sydney, which is Kings Cross and Paddington and the docks and all of that area, and it worked fine. Yeah. And uh, um, so it, you know the the trial was declared a you know an outstanding success. Right. After three months, we never went back, and and yeah. gradually then the system rolled on to change um, the number of women who came in to change their training as they came in, and it eventually then opened up you know a whole range of prosecution areas and you know just a lot of different opportunities for women, yeah. and then and then over the sort of four or five years, the whole process meant. Um, you know that that sort of the world changed dramatically for women, yeah. so that more and more opportunities, more and more women came in. A lot of the barriers, the silly barriers that were in place, were sort of limits um, were taken away, and yeah. so you know we could start to see a change in the number of women. Oh God, it's it was great. So, yeah, it's incredible. <coughs> great experience, but uh, it, it was just interesting to watch um, the circumstances that you need. You know, pe- people within and people without. Yeah. And to be able to support and a government who were prepared to do something you know, a bit different. But also a woman who was prepared to go, you know what, this is shit, we're going to change this. Well, I think it was, it was interesting too because it wasn't just me. Like, it needs, sometimes you need someone to sort of advocate and yes. say. And I really had nothing to lose. Like, mm. you know, what could be the worst thing they could have done to me? And mm. I used to say, you know, I still do sometimes, you know, worst case, I'll go and drive a bus. Mm. And because somehow or other I figured out bus drivers earn pretty well. Yeah. <laughs> and I figured I could do that and I could surf or something. And, yeah. And I think the piece that I learned that once you sort of someone steps up and says, well, come on, we've got nothing to lose, so let's have a go, you do, it gives courage to a lot of other people. Absolutely. Yeah. And I think that's, um, you know, the thing I spend, you know, a lot of time with people, you know, saying is just stop being afraid. Yeah. You know, they can't do anything to you really i mean they might say nasty things about you or they might yeah. you know but in the end they're not gonna you know do too much aren't no. you? um and especially if you don't let them